Have you ever wondered how languages originated? How did we go from making simple sounds and gestures to making complex systems of communication? This is a question that has intrigued scholars and linguists for centuries. As we delve into the origins of language, we encounter a fascinating theory, the concept of archaic Negro-Egyptian. This theory, initially developed by Cheikh Anta Diop and Theophile Obenga, and further refined by Jean-Claude Mboli, challenges our preconceived notions about language classification, particularly within the African continent. It proposes that archaic Negro-Egyptian, a language family that originated in Central East Africa, is a crucial piece of the linguistic puzzle. So, what exactly is archaic Negro-Egyptian? Well, imagine a time when language was just beginning to take shape. According to Mboli, archaic Negro-Egyptian started with merely 10 monosyllabic roots. These roots were fundamentally onomatopoeic, mimicking the sounds of the world around them. It was language in its rawest form, echoing the rustling leaves, the rushing rivers, and the calls of the wild. Yet, from these humble beginnings, something extraordinary happened. These ten monosyllabic roots began to evolve, gradually forming a free word order structure. Rather than being restricted by rigid grammatical rules, words could be arranged in various ways, allowing for a rich tapestry of expression and communication. This was the birth of archaic Negro-Egyptian, a language that would eventually give rise to numerous dialects and influence several other language families. But of course this is just the start of our linguistic journey, the story of archaic Negro-Egyptian doesn't end here. It continues to evolve, branching out, influencing and being influenced by other languages. And as we continue to explore this fascinating subject, we'll discover how this ancient language has left its mark on the world of linguistics. So, let's delve deeper into the development and influence of the Archaic Negro-Egyptian language. Archaic Negro-Egyptian is a fascinating language, evolving from simple onomatopoeic roots into a complex linguistic system. In its early stages, Archaic Negro-Egyptian was made up of 10 monosyllabic roots. These roots were remarkably simple, based on the sounds of the natural world, embodying the onomatopoeic nature of early human communication. This was a language in its rawest form, a direct translation of the sounds and experiences of life into verbal expression. However, over time this basic linguistic structure started to evolve, transforming into a more intricate system. The ten onomatopoeic roots bloomed into a language with a free word order structure. This evolution marked a significant milestone in the development of archaic Negro-Egyptian. It was no longer a simple form of communication, but a complex language capable of expressing a wide range of human thoughts and emotions. The richness of archaic Negro-Egyptian didn't stop there. It also gave birth to three distinct branches. Each of these branches evolved in their own unique ways, leading to the development of post-classic Negro-Egyptian and further dialect advancements. The first branch remained close to the roots, preserving many of the original features of the archaic language. The second branch, on the other hand, embraced change, evolving and adapting to the shifting cultural and environmental influences. The third branch struck a balance between preservation and evolution, combining elements of both to form a unique dialect. These three branches not only enriched the linguistic landscape of ancient Africa, but also laid the groundwork for the development of post-classic Negro-Egyptian. This later evolution of the language would go on to have a profound influence on modern African philosophy and thought. It's fascinating to see how a simple language could evolve into such a complex system, isn't it? But that's not all. Let's now look at how archaic Negro-Egyptian influenced other languages. It's one thing to evolve as a language, but it's another to influence other languages. And that's precisely what archaic Negro-Egyptian did. This ancient language didn't stop at its own evolution. It reached out, impacting other languages, specifically Semitic and Indo-European languages. The theory is that these language families, which include languages like Hebrew, Arabic, English, and German, have their roots in Africa, specifically in archaic Negro-Egyptian. Yes, you heard that right, these languages that span continents and cultures may have originated from the heart of Africa. But how can a language influence others? Think of it as a ripple effect. As people moved and migrated, they took their language with them, spreading words, grammar structures, and phonetics. Over time, these elements got absorbed into other languages, leading to the development of new dialects and eventually, entirely new languages. Let's take a closer look at Semitic languages. This family includes languages like Arabic, Hebrew, and Amharic. Researchers have found similarities in grammar and word forms between Semitic languages, 
and archaic Negro-Egyptian. For example, the structure of sentences, the use of verbs, and the formation of words show striking resemblances. This suggests a close relationship and a possible common ancestor, which many believe to be archaic Negro-Egyptian. Now let's turn our attention to Indo-European languages. This language family is even more diverse, including languages from English and German to Hindi and Persian. Again, similarities in grammar structures and word forms point towards a common African origin. The theory of an African genesis of Indo-European languages is indeed a game-changer. It challenges the traditional belief that these languages originated in the Eurasian steppes and suggests a much deeper connection between languages across the globe. But what does this mean? It means that our understanding of language development and human migration might need a revision. If archaic Negro-Egyptian did influence Semitic and Indo-European languages, it suggests a level of interaction and migration much earlier than previously thought. It also implies that Africa played a much more significant role in the development of world languages than traditionally credited. So we see how archaic Negro-Egyptian not only developed into a complex language but also influenced other major languages. But what does this mean for modern languages? The influence of archaic Negro-Egyptian didn't stop with Semitic and Indo-European languages. It continues to shape modern languages and philosophy. The classic Negro-Egyptian language, originating in Central East Africa, has had a profound influence on modern African philosophy. This language family, steeped in history and culture, has contributed to the intellectual and philosophical landscape of Africa. It has shaped the way people think, the way they perceive the world, and the way they express their thoughts and ideas. This influence is not limited to just language but extends to the very core of African philosophy, emphasizing a holistic worldview that respects harmony, balance, and interconnectedness. Renowned scholars, Cheikh Anta Diop and Theophile Obenga, took it upon themselves to delve deeper into these linguistic connections. Their research aimed to establish a genetic relatedness between ancient Egyptian and modern African languages. Diop's and Obenga's work were revolutionary, as it challenged existing language classifications and presented a new perspective on the roots of African languages. Their findings suggest a close relationship between the languages spoken by the ancient Egyptians and those spoken in modern Africa. Diop and Obenga identified typological similarities in grammar and word forms between these languages. These similarities were not just surface-level resemblances but deep-rooted connections indicative of a shared linguistic ancestry. Their research, further refined by Mboli, pointed towards a common origin, tracing back to the archaic Negro-Egyptian language. This research has significant implications for our understanding of language development and evolution. It suggests that languages, like people, are interconnected, evolving and changing over time, while maintaining traces of their origins. It illustrates how language can serve as a bridge between the past and the present, connecting us to our ancestors and our cultural heritage. In essence, the roots of modern languages might be more intertwined than we ever imagined, all tracing back to the archaic Negro-Egyptian language. Isn't that something to ponder about? We've covered a lot of ground today, haven't we? We began our journey with the origins of language, learning about the ten monosyllabic roots of archaic Negro-Egyptian, a language born from onomatopoeia, and grown into a free word order structure. We delved into its development and the emergence of three distinct branches leading to post-classic Negro-Egyptian and further dialect developments. We then explored the influence of archaic Negro-Egyptian on Semitic and Indo-European languages, a testament to the African origins of these language families. We also noted the evidence of typological similarities in grammar and word forms, supporting the close relationship between ancient Egyptian and modern Black African languages. Finally, we saw how the classic Negro-Egyptian, originating in Central East Africa, continues to shape modern African philosophy and languages. This exploration was based on the groundbreaking research of Cheikh Anta Diop and Theophile Obenga, who aimed to establish genetic relatedness between ancient Egyptian and modern African languages. So the next time you speak or hear a language, remember that its roots might trace back to the archaic Negro-Egyptian language. And that's a fascinating thought, isn't it? If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to keep up with the latest content.